Is it possible to start stabilizing your blood sugar and see improvements in your mood in just seven days? Absolutely. In this video, I'm gonna go through five incredibly effective yet incredibly simple nutritional strategies that are gonna help you move on from unbalanced blood sugar and the mood swings that come with them. Hey, I'm Jess, I'm a clinical nutritionist, and we're gonna be diving straight into these strategies today. So if you haven't watched part one of the blood sugar series, that's more so about how blood sugar contributes to mood swings, how to tell what type of dysglycemia you may be having, then I suggest you go watch that video first because it's gonna give you a really good foundation of why blood sugar is so incredibly important for mood stability. If you have watched that video, awesome. Let's get into the five strategies. I wanna start by letting you know that all of the strategies that we're discussing today, with the exception of the first one, is really focused on inclusion over exclusion. I think a huge barrier for people in wanting to change their diet is the idea that all nutritional guidance is basically about just what not to eat. While this really isn't the case, I do think that we need to be honest with ourselves about the heavy hitters in our lives that sabotage even our best laid plans. And I also need to give the disclaimer that many of the strategies that we're discussing today are incredibly small shifts that together really do have the ability to hugely impact your blood sugar. But if you're regularly consuming foods that are directly tied to dysglycemia, then these other tips and strategies aren't going to get you as far. So just to make sure that we're on the same page, the first strategy is to eliminate or drastically reduce the not so fab five. The not so fab five are number one, sugar, in all added forms. Obviously, there's gonna be times for some added sugars in your diet, but for the purpose of these seven days and for really trying to get your blood sugar under control, you really wanna eliminate all added forms of sugar. And yes, this includes natural sugars like agave or date syrup. Some of these are actually higher on the glycemic index and load than regular table sugar. Not that that's good either. Two is processed foods. So wheat flours, corn flours, things made from those like pastas, bagels, bread, cereals, etc. You definitely want to try and get these out of your way. Number three are fast foods. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Number four are vegetable oils like canola oil, rapeseed oil, safflower oil, etc. Number five is alcohol. Alcohol is not only a depressant, but has a huge impact on our blood sugar and causes dysglycemia for a lot of people. My side strategy to try and avoid the not so fab five is to reduce or try not to eat out for these seven days. Essentially, when we're eating out, it's very hard to avoid things like vegetable oils and added sugars. And ultimately, there's gonna be a time and place in your life to do that. But when we reduce the frequency in which we're eating out, that gives us much more control of not even having these things in our sphere at all. Okay. So let's get into some other strategies. This one is about how to eat, and if you watched the previous video, you got my very first tip on making sure that you do not eat carbohydrates alone. This kind of goes off of that, but takes it to the next level or the next notch, and that is to have fat, fiber, and protein at every single meal. Fat and protein are what slow the release of blood sugar in our blood and help us stay satiated throughout the day. It basically prevents us from being on that roller coaster, right? From having those ups and those downs. So in regards to your meals, I want you to use those to stabilize and anchor yourself throughout the day. If you have not only fat and protein, but additionally fiber, then that's gonna help with all those things we just discussed and it's gonna help keep our blood sugar much more stable throughout the day. 
The next strategy is to get real consistent. And yes, by consistency, I mean your meal timing, but it also just means in general. Our bodies have internal clocks, circadian rhythms, and other functions where they really thrive on routine and consistency. So let's talk about blood sugar and consistency for a minute. When we skip meals or don't eat regularly, then we are more likely to have those hypoglycemic dips. And then we're more likely to have hyperglycemia when we do eat because our body is kind of used to being on that blood sugar roller coaster. So in order to prevent this, you want to have regularly timed meals throughout your day. You can use those three meals with fat, fiber, and protein as your anchors. And then if you need snacks in between those because you're going a long amount of time without eating, then you can certainly do so. The key is consistency and not specific times because we each have different schedules. So you have to find a schedule that works for you. And then I want you to try your best to stick to it. You would be so surprised by what sticking to consistent meal times can actually do for not only your blood sugar but for your body in general our digestion loves consistency our sleep patterns love consistency everything really loves consistency I think that we essentially train our bodies to have certain expectations about eating at certain times when we are consistent and that prevents our bodies from getting into this fight or flight mode or super stress state where it's not sure whether or not we're going to eat. The next strategy, not everyone will love, but I think it will get you quite a ways, and that is to reduce your breakfast carbohydrates. So I hinted in this video that there are some strategies that you can implement without going on a keto or no carb diet. And while that totally is true, I do think it's really helpful to reduce the amount of carbohydrates that you eat in the morning. And this is for a few reasons. Let's think about breakfast foods for a minute and not only how high they often are in carbohydrates, but how often high they are in added sugars. We've basically have been trained to crave and desire sweet sweet things and sweet foods in the morning, which is actually the worst thing that we can do for our blood sugar in terms of setting ourselves up for stable blood sugar throughout the rest of the day. I also think it's just a really great exercise to challenge our idea of wanting something or needing something sweet in the morning. A lot of people can't even imagine having something savory in the morning, and I think that this really resets our palate in terms of wanting that sweet hit, which will also help with blood sugar regulation because when we don't have that sweet hit, then that often reduces our sugar cravings for the rest of the day. Some ideas of things you could have in the morning would be eggs, which contain a lot of fat in addition to a little bit of protein, maybe some actual meat like sausage or turkey of some kind. And then if you wanted to have a little bit of carbohydrates or something like fruit, I would stick to something low glycemic like a handful of berries because that's gonna pair really well with what you're eating, but it's, it's not gonna destabilize your blood sugar. The last strategy that we're gonna talk about for these seven days is focusing on the big three. So we're reducing the not so fab five and we're focusing on the big three for blood sugar stability, which are omega-3 fatty acids, probiotics, and magnesium. Omega-3 fats you'll find in fatty fish probiotics you'll get from fermented foods, and magnesium you'll find in dark leafy greens, nuts and seeds, in addition to some things like beans and dark chocolate. The reason why I mentioned these though is because even though it's great to try and base your diet on consuming a high amount of these foods, these are often three nutrients that people generally supplement with because we simply may not be getting enough of them in our diet to have the effects that we really want. Magnesium, for example, is incredibly low these days in foods just because of the soil. Many people don't consume enough fish or omega-3 fats in comparison to the omega-6 fats that they get, so fish oil supplementation can be really helpful for this. 
And then probiotic foods are great to start including, but some people might wanna take an additional probiotic as well. So I've left some links to some products and brands below if you are interested in supplementing in any of these nutrients. Well, we're not gonna get into some deep science today on how each of these nutrients are really good for blood sugar stability. They each play a very prominent role and they're nutrients that if we don't have enough of, then we can definitely have a harder time with blood sugar stability and and insulin resistance in general. So these are some really easy nutritional hacks and a great place to start if you've never really given it a solid go at addressing your blood sugar before to see how it may improve or impact your mood. I think as a society, we often think that we need to go to extremes to receive any benefits, especially when it comes to dietary interventions, but that's not necessarily always the case. If you are interested in more advanced strategies on how to balance your blood sugar, then absolutely let me know in the comments below and I would be happy to make a video. Just know that even if you do decide to explore more advanced interventions like wearing a continuous glucose monitor, it doesn't negate the foundational aspects that we we've gone over that you're still going to need to address if you want to see improvement. If you want to continue learning more about how to improve your mood through your diet, then check out this video here and subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you'll get an update when I release the next video. See you soon.